hello hello guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm gonna have a thrift flip i'm trying to create a vignette for my booth um i'm gonna incorporate like some lemons and maybe some blues so here we're gonna start with a um i think this is a light fixture i'm not sure um the top part is a part of a, a lamp base i'm gonna put them together and just to create a cloche And then here you see me using the um, Gorilla Glue um, just to make sure when it is um, when they use it to lift, um, it doesn't come apart. Last thing I want is something falling apart at the booth and then it breaks. We don't want that. So I'm also going to secure it with a screw just to be on the safe side. Then I'm going to get this Waverly um, white chalk paint and I'm just going to dry brush over all that detail just to bring it out. I just love, love, love doing this. I don't know. I just really love to work with really ornate pieces, stuff that has a lot of detail. It's just so fun to paint. So next, I'm going to add some Gorilla Glue to the top of the cloche or of the light fixture, whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is, but... Um, just make sure you put plenty if you do do something like this only because um, once you add the top piece that's going to pretty much be holding the weight of the glass. So you want to make sure it's on there pretty tight. I let it sit usually overnight before I take it to the booth just to be sure. Then I have these pieces left from a headboard that I cut apart. Um, these were solid wood, so I didn't want to throw them away. So I'm going to get these little wood circles. I'm going to add them to the top and just make them like candle pillars and then maybe stamp them or something. I start by adding some tight bond to the top. Um, I'm going to let them sit. Um, once I take them out to distress, I will go ahead and shoot some nails through them just to be sure that it's going to be on there tight. And while those sit and dry, I'm going to move on to the next one. Using these transfers from IOD Lemon Drops, I'm going to give this little rat and tray a makeover, which um, I always come across. I actually have a stack of them, so I'm trying to figure out some things to do with them, or I might just place them as they are in my booth. So here I'm just trying to figure out the placement of the transfer. Um, I end up just using one. And then you'll see I use um, my IOD um, letter stamps and I'm going to put the word lemonade. So here I'm going to start by placing it down. I'm going to use this little tool that comes with every transfer when purchased. Um, just start scraping over the top. This one took a little bit of pressure just to make sure that I get into all the little creases and crevices. So nothing lifts once I pick up the transfer sheet. Um, if any pieces, um, if they don't stick well, all you have to do is put it back down, put a little bit more pressure and it should release. So lifting up one of the corners of the transfer, um, transfer sheet, you're going to start to bring it back so it can release from the sheet. And if any pieces get left behind, all you have to do is set the sheet back down and put more pressure. So before tossing the transfer sheet, I'm going to go over the transfer Push down on all the surface of the transfer just to make sure that all the little pieces are adhered to the tray. So using my IOD stamps, I'm going to spell out the word lemonade um, to stamp it right underneath the transfer. Using this transfer sticky paper that I got from, I don't know, I guess a thrift store or it could have been the Goodwill clearance bins. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the stamps um ink them and then i'm going to go ahead and stamp the tray i'm going to use um you'll see me use like a brayer that was also picked up at the thrift store so i'm sorry you guys if i don't have like an exact on where it's from i know iod has one but um sometimes i just use what i have i don't normally use a brayer but um since this is wicker i just want to make sure that the stamps are pressed evenly all the way across then I used a sandy block just to give it a quick distress, just to make it blend in a little bit more. Next DIY, I'm going to create a cute little vase using this jar. 
um, that I picked up from, I think I had received a box of them. So I'm going to start by mixing up some um, salt wash with my paint. Um, the reason why I'm adding texture is because this jar also has like some letters that are a little bit lifted. So you'd be able to see them by just painting over them. So by adding texture, I'm going to just try and disguise the wording. Um, they were on there really good, so I couldn't really take them off. I tried um, acetone. I tried scraping them off. They just weren't budging. So I'm going to create some texture, and that should do the trick to um, disguise them. So I will set this aside to dry. Um, I'm going to start painting these... Um, these pieces here also creating some texture i'm going to end up doing um this coat of yellow and then doing a coat of white and then distressing it to bring back some of the yellow so i'm going to stipple some areas brush on some areas um i really really love a textured look um it's just something i'm really into right now um, once that dries i'm going to put a coat of white I think it's um, white chalk paint in the color ivory. And I'm going to turn it over just to paint the bottom since it is going to my booth. I like to have, I like my pieces to have a finished look um, all the way around. And jumping back to the um, jar, I'm going to also do a coat of white on this one as well. And I'm also going to bring back the yellow on this one. So I'm going to start brushing on the white. I ain't going for a really finished look since I am going to be distressing and bringing back the yellow. So I'm not really going for full coverage. So once it has sat and dried, I'm going to go ahead and get my sanding block and, and distress it a little bit. If the paint gets too hard to distress, since I do this inside, I don't really want to um, create a lot of dust. So I do get a wet rag and if you wipe over your paint um, you can it makes it easier just to sand it off with the sanding block and here I'm gonna start cutting out my transfers also from the IOD lemon drop transfer pack I'm gonna figure out my placements and since this does have texture uh, it makes it a little bit tricky but if you just put pressure it goes on there pretty well Also, before putting on a transfer on anything that was just painted, just make sure that the paint is really, really dry. Give it a couple hours before you actually add the transfer on. I've actually had times where I don't give it enough time and the transfer will lift up my paint. And here you see me with my little tool that comes with the transfers. You're going to see me start putting the pressure lifting up the corner of the transfer sheet just so it can start releasing from the sheet. Curved surfaces are a little bit tricky for me. Um, so I pull up the transfer sheet and as the I see the transfer coming off, um, without putting too much pressure, I try and pull it off the transfer sheet and then pushing it down on my own with my finger without being on the transfer sheet, if that makes sense. So here you see that it's released from the sheet and I just push it down with my fingers. And here one of the pieces didn't rub off correctly so you just put it back down and there it is. You just put it back together and it'll be just fine. And you want to always make sure to burnish it just to make sure that it is all, all adhered. Um, here I'm just pushing down since it has so much texture I just want to make sure that it's in the little crevices. And here, just to add a little more interest, I'm going to use one of my crockery stamps and just add it to the corner here. I feel like it gives it a little bit more of a vintage look. Then I'm just going to make a quick little bow on top just to make it a little bit cuter. I don't put any glue just because some people are bow people and some people are not. So I just want to leave the option open. Next, quickly here, I'm going to get this crock and just add a transfer on it um, on a ceramic surface or any like 
glass surface they adhere really really well so before you take it off its transfer sheet just make sure that that is where you want it because it will stick and as always here i am looking for my little tool gonna give it a little pressure and it'll quickly release from the sheets and look how easy it comes off then I'm gonna burnish it just to make sure it's on there well so I took these outside gave them a quick distress I'm giving them a quick wipe down um, there you can see some of the yellow popping through I'm gonna use these IOD stamps and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp them with this floral one in the front and then I'm gonna leave the, the back of them blank just in case they want to turn it over and do just a without the stamp they can have that option as well Then using my DIY wax, I'm going to go ahead and give seal them up for protection. And I go ahead and seal up the jar as well. Next, moving on to these rolling pins that I've had laying around for quite a while. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint them white. At this point, I still wasn't sure what I was going to do. I know one of them, I did want to do the lemon drop transfer on them as well. The other two were just as I go. I decided what I was going to do. So I'm going to give two coats, two coats of paint to each rolling pin. So for the first one, I decided on this blue and white napkin. I'm going to start in very small sections, with, which I highly recommend. Um, here I'm going to add some Mod Podge. I do very thin coats of Mod Podge otherwise you're gonna get like it's gonna take so long to dry and I feel like the napkin tears a lot easier here grabbing my saran wrap I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering it to the rolling pin then I'm gonna cover another small section with Mod Podge And just work your way around the rolling pin slowly. And you will get a little bit of wrinkle. Well, I did. Um, I don't mind it at all, though. Here I'm coming to the end. I'm going to add more Mod Podge and you're going to see me just cut off the excess of the napkin. So I'm going to cut off this excess and then I'm going to use my Mod Podge and also just add some right underneath these lifted surfaces just to get it all um, adhered to the rolling pin. Then I will set this up to dry. Moving on, I'm going to start distressing the other rolling pins. Um, these got a little bit hard to distress so you will see me wipe it with a wet rag makes it so much easier to distress and it doesn't create so much dust as well look at how easy it comes off after you give it a little wipe with a wet rag Before moving on, I grab this rolling pin and I'm going to go ahead and get my sanding block and take off all the excess napkin that's around the edges. 
And I'm sorry guys for jumping back and forth from one project to the next. I was working on several things this day. Trying to get some stuff done for my booth. So once I get all the excess off, I do get my Mod Podge and go around all the edges where it was lifted. Um, and then I go ahead and put a, a coat of Mod Podge all over the rolling pin just to seal it in. For the next one here, I'm going to go ahead and measure out where I want to add my transfer. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Then here, starting in very small sections, I'm going to start to transfer it onto the rolling pin. Working in small sections here as well, working my way around. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like how it was just cut off right here, so I just add another piece of transfer sheet just to fill that in. And again, just giving it a quick sanding. Moving on to the next one, I'm going to go ahead and use my same stamps that I used on the previous project. I'm going to go ahead and roll it over this um, floral stamp. Then I'm going to fill in some of the empty spaces using this, um, I think these are strawberries. I think they're super cute. Here I kind of overlapped one of the other ones that were already stamped on. Um, I just gave it a quick wipe and then re-stamped and I think it blends in. I'm going to go ahead and seal these up with some DIY wax for protection. Then I'm going to embellish them with little pieces of greenery that I pulled off of this garland that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to tie them around with some jute, not gluing them on in case they do want to take them off. Um, these are obviously not food grade safe anymore, but um, I still give the option in case they want to take off the greenery. So I go ahead and seal my next rolling pin as well and buff, give it a quick buff. Last rolling pin, I just decide that I want to age up the edges a bit using this Distress Oxide from Hobby Lobby. And I'm also going to embellish this one with some greenery and some jute without gluing. And as we come to an end on this video, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Here is the end result to all my thrift flips. If you are ever in the San Antonio area, these will be heading to my booth here at Craptique Mall on Northwest Military. Again, thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!